So Mr. Trump is saying that the stock market gave, gained $3.4 trillion since his election. Uh, just to put things in perspective, um, in the last three months since the pandemic began, uh, began and basically the entire world went into a lockdown, initially the stock markets crashed. And since 24th of March until yesterday, the stock market in the US have gained over a trillion US dollars. So that should give you an idea about what's going on in the stock market world right now. So even though the world has been on a standstill, uh, there are grim projections about how the economy is gonna do because most of the businesses were completely shut down for at least a month. And even if the opening, reopening has begun, it's been very, very slow and gradual. And they're going to be big repercussions in terms of how businesses move forward. Uh, so many millions of job losses are going to be there. So, so much of revenue has been lost. Uh, some of the industries have completely been uh, you know, put on the ground. For example, the airlines industry and, and, and the stuff. And in this, uh, in this scenario, you're seeing the stock market actually boom. Now that's a, uh, that's the biggest surprise the world would ever see, right? So we're gonna see how the stock markets actually operate and I'll try to put my perspective for you uh, so that by the end of the session, you are able to understand that even though the video tells you that the stock market is supposed to tell you how the economy is, is doing. So if the stock markets are doing really well, that means the economy is doing excellent, but that doesn't seem to be the case uh, as we speak right now, right? So we will, we will discuss that a little later as we move on to understand how we value stocks or how the markets are seen to, to be going up. What is the measure uh, that is used to, to, to actually say that the market is going up? Uh, coming back to the basics, uh, we look at the stock market. So there are, in the stock market itself, there are two sides of the market. One is called as the primary market and the other one is called as the secondary market. So the primary market deals with the company and the investors, which basically means primary market deals with companies, new companies coming in and issuing shares to investors. Okay, and that is why uh, the IPO flag has been put there, the initial public offering. So any company which has hitherto been a private company and wants to go public, uh, comes out with the initial public offering and then they give issue uh, new shares to investors at a, at a particular price and then they list on the stock exchange and then their shares become tradable. So investors that participate to buy the shares of such a company, when the company does the issue first time, right? That is called as the primary market. Now the same company, when it becomes a public company and lists on a stock exchange, then an investor can buy the shares of that company in the secondary market. So in the secondary market, the investors deal with new investors. Everybody got that? Okay, so in the secondary market, in the stock exchange, when you go and trade, for example, if somebody wanted to buy the shares of Facebook today, you go to the secondary market, right? You go to the NASDAQ market and you buy the shares of Facebook, which listed for the first time in the year 2010. So when in 2010, Facebook came out with an IPO, all the investors who applied or made an application to acquire shares went through the primary market. So that is the time where Mark Zuckerberg's company issued shares first time and they were given directly to the investors. And then from the day of its listing on the first day, since then Facebook has been trading on the NASDAQ stock market and anybody can go and purchase uh, the shares of Facebook. The only difference being that if you were the primary investor in Facebook, you would have bought the shares at $36 per share. And today Facebook is trading at somewhere around $280. So this is 10 years, 2010-2020. Now that's the ex exciting side of the market, isn't it? Uh, we'll see how companies' uh, share price uh, goes up uh, with time. And it's not all the companies, but the good companies. Before we go into, uh, you know, the valuation and uh, and how stock prices understood, how we see different 
parameters attached to a, a stock price. Let's understand the stock exchange in itself first. Let's understand the ecosystem. So you have a stock exchange. I've already uh, told you New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ market or the London Stock Exchange or the Bombay Stock Exchange or the Stock Exchange of Mauritius, right? So we have a stock exchange. And around that, we've got companies, we've got investors, we've got brokers, and we've got the regulator. So, so this is the entire ecosystem. The companies which come to the stock exchange primarily come to raise capital by doing an initial public offering and then listing their shares on that stock exchange. Okay, investors come to the market to access or be able to buy shares of companies that they're interested in and also for uh, the transparency, the liquidity and the protection they get by trading on the stock market. Brokers take license from the stock exchange, they take membership and then they build a business over it by becoming agents and, and allowing investors to come in and trade in company shares. The regulator, uh, just to give you uh, an analogy, the regulator in Mauritius is the Financial Services Commission, FSC. Uh, the FSC is the direct regulator of the stock exchange of Mauritius. In the United States, the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, is the regulator for the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. In India, the Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI, is the regulator. Now, all these four uh, entities are together forming the ecosystem, and each of them have their own role. So let's see what those roles are. The companies need capital to run their business. The investors have the capital. The brokers are acting as agents, and the regulator is basically the referee in this whole game. So what do the companies do? They issue shares because they need to raise capital. They engage investors, they come out with their pitch book, or they come out with their business story, they make it attractive, uh, and they, they, they deal with the stock exchange in terms of what their listing requirements are. They fulfill those requirements, they apply to the regulator, and then after fulfilling all the requirements, going through the process of the documentation and paperwork, they are finally able to list their sh shares on the stock e exchange as an officially listed company. And once they are officially listed, then obviously trading is facilitated in their shares and anybody who trades uh, on that stock exchange can buy or sell shares of that company. Let's look at this, the investors role in this. So the investors have money, they, they need investment opportunities. Some of them need trading opportunities, uh, but they also need safety of their transactions that they do. So if I am putting my money into a stock, I need to be sure that if I entered into a buy or sell transaction, right, that transaction is, is safe, it is secure. There is an entity that I am comfortable with, right, that I would deal uh, in, in those company shares. And that is where the role of not only the stock exchange, but also the regulators come in. Because the stock exchange has to provide an infrastructure which is foolproof, which basically means that when I as an investor deal into the shares of a company, my money is safe. And if I buy a, sh buy a share, I get it. I get the shares in my account. If I sell the shares, I get the money in my account, right? And also from an investor perspective, it is very important that the access to the exchange or the access to the products, the company shares is very, very easy. And that is where technology has been play, playing a pivotal role uh, in, in making the, the way we access the stock exchange and the products there uh, today. And we'll talk about that a little later. Brokers act as agent. So what they are, they are, they are intermediaries. They basically provide you access to the particular exchange. So as an individual investor, you go and open an account with the broker and then the broker gives you access to the stock exchange where the broker has got membership. Now you, you might say that, do I have to open accounts with multiple brokers? If I have to deal in, in, in Mauritius, I have to open an account with a Mauritian broker. 
if i have to open account say if somebody is interested to trade uh, foreign equities foreign shares then you have to open account with a foreign broker the answer to that is i will clarify that if you are trading in mauritius of course you have to open an account with a mauritian uh, stock broker somebody who has been licensed by the stock exchange of mauritius so you got a handful of brokers some of them uh, are part of leading banks and you can open an account with them mauritius market as you know is a very very small market but if you if, if some of you want to trade in the global market uh, a gentleman who's uh, who's currently attending uh, this workshop and who works with the spot forex platform would be knowing that most of the intermediaries globally offer access to most of the equities on global exchanges so through one particular broker you can actually get access to the united states market you can get access to the asian markets uh, for example somebody wants to trade uh, the nikkei uh, the japanese uh, you want to buy a japanese stock in japan listed on the tokyo stock exchange so you can go to a single broker which is a global broker who has membership access of all these large exchanges right so just to give you an example some of the brokers that you could open account with are interactive brokers uh, you could open an account with e trade these are all american uh, brokers and they, these are very very large companies the beauty about these brokers is that when, with a single account with a single currency account like you open an account obviously it's a us company so you will have to uh, do a transfer once from mauritius into their account in us dollars but after you have transferred your money to their account you can virtually trade into any uh, global stock exchange through them because they've got access to 95 or 96% of the global exchanges uh, of course they would not give you access uh, to the scm because it's a smaller market they may not give you access to say a uh, hawaii stock exchange but they will give you access to the top 10 or 15 global exchanges which basically account for 97% of the global business so if you are talking about investing in the world's largest 200 companies you will get access to them to one of these brokers uh the regulator as an entity is also very very important because they create the legal framework upon which this whole game of stock exchange the company issuing shares the invest investors investing the brokers providing access uh, all this is under a legal framework which is provided by the regulator right and it they don't only provide the playground uh, for these entities to play they also provide uh, an oversight when the game is being played so the the role of the referee as i put uh, their key role is a continuous role so one of the key roles that the uh, regulators play is investor protection so they are very very concerned with the fact that no small investor should be taken for a ride by a unscrupulous company that comes and lists on a stock exchange uh, just to give you an example a company might come up to a stock exchange and provide false information about what is happening with its business and when they provide the false information the investors might get an impression that something good is happening with the company and actually that might be a completely false information and they might in that manner be able to bring up the price by providing uh, completely uh, false information and then the investors smaller investors get into the shares at a high price and later on the promoters of the company come and sell their own shares to these small investors and and make a clean money in in a very very wrong way so practices like these are to be prevented by the regulator and therefore the regulator is solely responsible for uh, you know making sure that the game is played in the spirit of the game in a transparent manner and uh, they keep a complete oversight over how the participants are playing